Boom! We are live, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the Nolan Hawkeye Anthony YouTube channel. I want to thank all of you guys for being here. Uh, all the people who have been here since the beginning, since one of the original videos, I always say this, but the Iowa fan base really is, in my opinion, the best in the country. Uh, I don't think Iowa fans are over overbearing or uh, but but yet we are all very passionate. We love the team. We love the players. We support, uh, and it's just a really, really awesome program. Uh, and again, you guys have supported me since day one, and I am someone who values the uh, customer tremendously. So I just want to thank all you guys for that. Uh, I know I thank you guys a lot, but nonetheless, uh, I just wanted to give a thanks and a shout out. We are so close to reaching 1,000 subs. Help me get there with your own contribution. Every sub counts, uh, and all it takes is a quick bloop, and you are subscribed. And besides, subscribing makes you feel good. So, and that's that. At the very least, like, comment, share. You know the drill. And without further ado, let's get into this. All right. Um. This is going to be kind of an a la carte uh, podcast or episode. Um, I want to discuss the state of Iowa recruiting, and I also wanted to chime in on the Iowa quarterback position battle, um, considering that that is probably the most important position battle uh, going into this next uh, season. Uh, I, I don't have it now, but I showed you guys at the end of the season. It was close to the end of the uh, 10 and 4 uh, season. I showed you guys a tweet um, from some statistician. Uh, I, I don't even know exactly what he did or does. Um, but the stat basically was uh, centered around how miraculous it was that Iowa won so many games considering uh, the QBR of Iowa's quarterbacks. Uh, and essentially what the tweet was saying is that Iowa football wins in spite of the quarterbacks and when the quarterbacks actually just play average, just average. Iowa is nearly unbeatable. Um, so, and that is very, very interesting. Of course, there are those of you who believe that as long as Brian Ferentz is the offensive coordinator, hell, as long as Kirk Ferentz is the head coach at Iowa, that it will all be the same. It will all remain the same. Uh, I remember also seeing somebody put forth uh, a little phrase, a little metaphor that read uh, for the people who criticize Brian Ferentz, that Brian Ferentz is the sous chef, but Kirk Ferentz is the head chef who tells Brian Ferentz how to prepare the food. And I think that is pretty telling. I don't think that that it tells the whole story of the Iowa offense, but I do think that there is a lot of truth in uh, in that statement, I, I really, really do. Uh, very quickly, uh, as far as the quarterback battle goes, let me uh, pull up uh, a little bit of good stuff here. The four quarterbacks that will be on scholarship uh, for this season will be uh, incoming freshman out of Oklahoma, Carson May. Uh, and I think he has a ton of upside. I think he is or was a highly under-recruited uh, prospect. He comes from a very small town, and I, uh, from some conversations that I've had, you know, he is very much a small-town guy. And uh, in other words, he did not get out to a ton of the camps. It's not as though he didn't get out to anything, 
but you know, and with Koof and, and all that stuff, he just wasn't able to get the exposure that he would have in normal years. Uh, so Iowa really landed uh, a gem, in my opinion, with Carson May. Do I think that he will be ready to come in and compete uh, right away? Uh, probably not, because it's a huge transition to go from uh, a small town high school Oklahoma football to the Big Ten. And I'll, I'm the first person to say that I don't give a gosh darn about the size of the school, especially when it comes to recruiting rankings. And I really don't, because in my opinion, uh, and in my experience as uh, an athlete myself, if a guy can play, he can play and he will learn uh, the speed and get used to the speed of the game uh, in due time. Uh, but ultimately, if the guy can play, he can play. And that's all there is to it. Uh, but with that being said, I don't think he will be a major player uh, in year one. Uh, like I said, I, I love his upside. I think he's got a lot of great intangibles and Iowa, you know, for as much as they get made fun of for recruiting uh, pro style quarterbacks, three of the scholarship quarterbacks on their roster or for this upcoming season will be guys who are dual threat quarterbacks, Alex Padilla, Joey Labus, and Carson May. The only guy who wouldn't be considered a dual threat would be Spencer Petrus. Now, uh, and more on Spencer Petrus here in a moment. Uh, here is Joey Labus's profile. 247 Sports loved him. They gave him a four-star grade. Uh, and he, again, Iowa, back-to-back -back years, got really, really lucky in the quarterback that uh, was made available to them due to COVID and these players not being able to get the type of exposure that they would in normal years, which is why uh, a school like Iowa who does their due diligence and, and finds their way into every nook and cranny when it comes to recruiting was able to land uh, guys like Joey Labus and Carson May. Now, all of that aside, the three main the three key players, all of you know, it's not like I am revealing some hidden information here, will be Joey Labus, uh, Spencer Petrus, and Alex Padilla. Obviously, Spencer Petrus has the most game experience. Alex Padilla uh, has the next most experience. Uh, but I would say Joey Labus is probably uh, the guy with the highest ceiling. He has the most natural talent of anybody in the quarterback room. Uh, I am going to make a case for each one of these guys, and I am going to tell you who at the end, I'm going to tell you who I think gets it and who I would go with if I was the head coach. And obviously, keep in mind, I'm not there watching practice uh, day in, day out like the coaches are. Uh, but nonetheless, I will give you my two cents on that. Spencer Petrus, let's make the case for him. Number one, uh, there are reports that Spencer Petrus uh, was in the weight room uh, more this offseason than he has ever been uh, in previous years. Uh, he worked on his athleticism and he really uh, worked on getting in shape. Now, in my experience, again, as an athlete myself, as a former Division I water polo player, there is a limit to how athletic you can be. Uh, there are, you know, the bottom line is no matter how hard you push, you could be the hardest working mofo in the world, and you still have a limit to how athletic you can be. And how, what that ceiling is for Spencer Petrus, I would say it's still probably pretty low. Uh, you know, he does not seem to be a guy who has a bunch of hidden athleticism that it was just waiting to emerge out of nowhere. That that's not what uh, appears to be the case for me. He is a very tall, um, lengthy uh, guy with not a ton of quick twitch, fast twitch uh, mobility. He's just not. Now, with that being said, again, I'm making the case for Spencer Petrus here, and that's good news. Uh, and anything will help if 
Uh, if who knows, maybe it will make a huge difference. Uh, but like I said, anything will help. The, but the main case that that, in my opinion, you can make for uh, Spencer Petrus is this: that there's been some good and there's been some bad. Either way, he has shown that he can be a winning quarterback. In his two years as a starting quarterback, Iowa has been top of the Big Ten West, finishing second in the Big Ten West the year, uh, the six and two year, uh, the COVID year. Well, both seasons were COVID years, but uh, the with no fans in the stadium, and then they won 10 games. Obviously, Alex Padilla won some of those games, but Spencer Petrus was uh, a part of uh, beating Nebraska and the white hot start that Iowa was uh, moving towards. And they got all the way to second in the country. Uh, no matter how you slice it, Spencer Petrus has shown that he can at the very least be a part of winning teams. Now you could say, well, Nolan, it, it has nothing to do with Spencer Petrus. Iowa wins, as you said at the beginning of this video, in spite of Spencer Petrus. And I would say, you know what? There is some truth to that. And there is. Uh, I would not say that that Spencer Petrus is the key reason that Iowa has been a very winning program the past couple of seasons. I would say that it's been Iowa's defensive line, their defense in general, yada, yada, yada. The last thing I would say for Spencer Petrus is that he does have a big arm. And it is possible that in his, I believe this is his senior season, that the culmination of all of his big game experience and all the reps that he has been given, and we have seen this from quarterbacks. Hell, some of the top quarterbacks in the NFL draft, I believe the guy who went to Pitt, you know, was mediocre. And then all of a sudden, boom, he skyrockets and is a first round draft talent. You never know what someone is truly capable of and when they might pop. Now, is that a reason to roll the dice on Spencer Petrus in and of itself? I would say not. I would say that it is definitely not enough to roll the dice in by simply saying, well, you know, hopefully all of his game experience will culminate in him, you know, lighting it up uh, this season. That is not enough to go by. But when you look at Spencer Petrus and you're making the case for him, you look at his leadership, his big arm. Uh, and the fact that he knows that he has to be a lot better. So experience, big arm, uh, and uh, just a little, a sense of urgency, if you will. Alex Padilla. Um, Alex Padilla, in my opinion, uh, I was pretty critical of him um, last season. Uh, I know the backup quarterback is everybody's favorite quarterback, or favorite player on the roster. And quite frankly, I really like Alex Padilla. I think he's a great guy and he's a great teammate. I really, really do. But as far as looking at what he did on the field last year, there was a lot to be desired or there was a lot left to be desired there. Uh, he, you know, let's be honest, folks. He, it's not as though when he got in there, Iowa all of a sudden started winning games due to Alex Padilla. It, it's, it's simply just, that's just simply not the case. Iowa was able to win games again. And Alex Padilla just happened to be the quarterback who was the quarterback when they started to win games again. But of course the, the common denominator of winning those games was the defense, the run game, things like that. Now, do I think Alex Padilla provided a little bit of a spark? Sure. Uh, but ultimately, folks, go take a look for yourselves. Uh, you know what? Let's. I'm just going to pull it up right now myself, uh, Alex Padilla's stats. Okay. So, but you guys can look it up yourselves as well. But with Alex Padilla, I would say that uh, uh, if I'm making the case for him, and I, I really think that you can use a lot of the reasons that I listed uh, for Spencer Petrus with Alex Padilla. Now, with Alex Padilla, he doesn't have as big of an arm as Spencer Petrus, but he is 
theoretically, even though we didn't see it over the course of last season, he is theoretically a more accurate passer. Uh, and he is very good with the short passes to intermediate passes. The other thing that Alex Padilla provides, even though we didn't see a ton of it last year, is the ability to escape the pocket. Here are the stats. 2021, he was 49.1% uh, throwing the football uh, completion percentage, uh, and he had two tubs to two INTs. Uh, I think the biggest thing with Alex Padilla is just that he's different uh, than Spencer Petras and provides a, a – not a totally different game because it's it, there's a lot of things that he does is similar to Spencer, but the main thing is his ability to run the ball. But of course, I and I've showed you guys this uh, when Hawk Central did an article on Brian Ferentz and how they view the quarterbacks and kind of just their thoughts on Iowa's struggling offense last year. And they said they don't like their quarterbacks running the ball at all and they don't teach it at all. And however, it is interesting that some of Iowa's best quarterbacks were guys who could take off and run. C.J. Beathard, Ricky Stanzi, uh, you know, Drew Tate, uh, Brad Banks. They had that ability as well. So in my opinion, uh, if Alex Padilla can utilize that and not make it his entire game, but utilize it when he needs to more than he, than what we saw last year, I think that he can have a leg up on Spencer Petras. Again, a lot of the same things that I said for Spencer, you're saying with Alex, he's a leader. Uh, you know, uh, he has game experience. He has big game experience and, and hopefully all of the reps that he has gotten would culminate in him taking off next season. Now, obviously, he doesn't have as much experience as Spencer Petras, but he still does have some good experience. Uh, and, you know, in my opinion, he's probably the most interesting quarterback on the Iowa roster because, again, there's a lot to like. You know, he has a good throwing motion. Uh, he he's mobile, uh, he's quick, but the, the completion percentage just wasn't there. Uh, and last but not least, Joey Labus. Joey Labus is six, five. He's absolutely huge. He's six, four, six, five. He is just as mobile as Alex Padilla, if not more so. And he has a huge arm. Uh, I, when Iowa landed him, I immediately you know, told you guys how talented he was, and it is true. And all the reports coming out of camp are very positive on Joey Labus, especially the reports on him from last year when he was on scout team. As I said, I think Joey Labus is the guy who can get Iowa over the hump. He is the guy who can get Iowa's offense over the hump, which is very important, and I will wrap that into who I think should be the starting quarterback. His ceiling is supremely high. Uh, he has everything that you would look for in a starting quarterback. Now, who do I think that the Iowa Hawkeyes coaching staff goes with? Well, I got to be honest. Uh, I, as I always try and be honest with you guys, I think it'll be Spencer Petras. And I don't think that that's a crazy idea. Uh, Iowa almost always goes with who they trust, who they feel more comfortable with. Uh, and, and that's just how it's always been. They rarely take a chance on a guy uh, and, you know, go with his talent over what they have seen uh, in game speed in real time. Uh, if a guy in practice is lighting it up, but they have a guy who has played uh, a ton of games and started for the Hawkeyes, they're always going to go with the guy who has started and played a lot of games over the guy who is tearing it up in practice. That's just the way it is. So I think the Iowa Hawkeyes would go with Spencer Petras. Now, who would your boy go with? I would go with Joey Labus. This guy is supremely talented. 
I think there would be some bumps in the road early on in his starting uh, quarterback career, but I think he is the guy who can get Iowa over the hump, which is ultimately what Iowa and us fans are looking for. And that is the question that, in my opinion, the Iowa coaching staff needs to be asking themselves, and I think fellow Iowa fans should be asking themselves, is which quarterback can get Iowa over the hump? And when you look at Spencer Petras, from all the available data, do you think that he can get us over the hump? Eh, pr- I don't think so. I think the answer is probably no. Now, is it is it possible? Sure, it is. But based on the available data, the answer is no. Alex Padilla, based on what we've seen, do you think, as a fan, do you think that he can help take Iowa over the hurdle that they are trying to get over? I would say he has a better chance than Spencer Petras, but again, from what we saw last year, there's not a ton of you know excitement or ooh, oh yeah, he has all the intangibles to get Iowa over the hump. Joey Labus, on the other hand, has all of those things. He has it in spades, and that is why he would be my start- starting quarterback. As I said. Uh, there would be bumps in the road early on, but this is absolutely who I would go with is Joey Frickin Labus. And I think that he is the quarterback of the future. He is everything the Iowa coaching staff has been looking for. Big arm, six foot four, big guy, mobile, a leader, a gamer. Guys, he is, he is the Iowa quarterback of the future. Uh, and I think Iowa needs to suck up some early uh, bumps in the road in order for the future uh, cashing in of all the chips with Joey Labus. So that is uh, my quarterback preview. Um, Iowa is close to wrapping up spring camp. Uh, They will be having the spring practice. I don't know uh, the date of that. Let me see if I can pull that up right quick for you guys. So I don't know when the open practice is. Iowa hasn't done a full-blown spring game for a couple years. I think the last time they did a full-blown spring game was 2017 uh, when Nate Stanley was still just a youngin on the Iowa roster. So it's been a little while. Um, uh, this says that it will be announced, but this was two months ago. Um, so, you know, uh, it is what it is now, lastly, wrapping up this video, there's not a ton of Iowa news. Um, but Iowa did host a massive recruiting weekend. And I did want to give you guys a tiny little update there. I don't want to spend too much time on it because again, all of this is prognostication and, Uh, guessing and, you know, things like that. And ultimately, you know, it's just recruiting is just such a, uh, a, it's just a tough business in general. Uh, And so, you know, I learned a while back not to care too much about it. It's definitely worth paying attention, but it's not worth getting wrapped up and totally uh, involved. So, but nonetheless, Uh, I'm going to go over some of the guys that Iowa is highly in on uh, and give you uh, my updated take on where they stand with each and every one of them. Um, It's pretty uh, readily available information. So here we go. The Iowa 2023 class is off to a phenomenal start. Uh, Marco Iowa already has their quarterback in high three-star at one time, four-star, and by some sites, four-star quarterback, Marco Lainez, uh, whose quarterback coach is also Nate Stanley's quarterback coach. Uh, Iowa landed Chase Brackney out of Colorado out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, some high-rated three-star who has offers from USC and all these places, uh, all these Pac-12 schools, out of nowhere commits to the Iowa Hawkeyes. Uh, His dad watched one of my videos, uh, and I think Chase Brackney is a huge get uh, for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Obviously, Alex Mata, who will play wide receiver, uh, is a big get. And here are the rest of the commitments that Iowa has. And currently, they have the 11th ranked class. Now, 
Let's take a look at some of the targets uh, that Iowa is in after here. Caden Proctor, the five-star out of Southeast Polk. Iowa has been the leader for his commitment since the very beginning. Uh, they are, in my opinion, still in the lead. All the reports indicate so uh, from all the top recruiting experts. Um, I think Alabama is worth paying attention to. I think Alabama is the best competition against Iowa. But ultimately, I just don't see Caden Proctor uh, there, there's too many ties to the University of Iowa. His high school teammate, uh, Xavier Wampa, is already there. Uh, he's already shown, and he pay, in other words, he's paved the way. He's shown Caden Proctor that it's okay to be a five-star and commit to the Iowa Hawkeyes. Uh, they will treat you right. Um, so all of the hard work of, you know, being a huge recruit uh and choosing the Hawkeyes is already out of the way because a Xavier Wampa already did it. Um, they are good buddies. And plus Iowa, I mean, what other schools in the country are better at producing NFL offensive linemen than Iowa? The only other school would be maybe Alabama, but even then it's, I mean, Iowa is usually considered the top school at producing NFL quality offensive linemen. Tyler Linderbaum is the next guy who is likely to be another number one draft pick from the offensive line from Iowa. So uh, all the ties are there. The only thing that Alabama could give Proctor that Iowa cannot is, and it's not even, uh, I don't even know how to say this. Uh, on the surface, the one thing that Alabama can give is competing for a national championship. Now, with that being said, do I think Iowa is capable of competing for a national championship? Probably not. But as we saw from last year, Iowa is capable of playing with the big boys as they slid all the way up to number two in the country, in the country, and spent much of the season in the top 10. Uh, and I think that this Iowa team going into this next season is as loaded as any team Iowa has had. So on the surface, the one thing that Alabama can give is competing for a national championship, which even that, uh, it's not as though Iowa is some scrub who is not competitive on the national scene at all. They very much are, very much are. So I would say Iowa is in great shape and currently the leaders for Caden Proctor. Kyler Casper, uh, bad news, guys. I don't think he's going to go to Iowa. Um, I think Iowa was in good shape early on in his recruitment. Um, but, man, so many schools have offered this dude, um, and I just don't think it's going to happen. If if Iowa was and has had shown that they were, were better offensively and could throw the ball and get the ball to their wide receivers on a more consistent basis, then maybe Casper would end up there. But as it stands now, uh, I just, I, I just don't see it happening. And he is not favored to pick the Iowa Hawkeyes. I think he's either going to go to Tennessee or to Oregon. Um, and you know, Iowa has done great recruiting the wide receiver group since Kelton Copeland has taken over. I've talked about it many times on many episodes, how much better Iowa has done recruiting the wide receiver position in the past, Iowa would have to get two star or unranked wide receivers that nobody had ever heard of. Now they are landing high three stars with multiple power five offers, uh, you know, Jacob Bostic, uh, Alex Mata, uh, you know, uh, Deontay Vines, uh, Keegan Johnson, Brody, uh, Brody Becht, uh, Arlan Bruce. So it's, it's all, it's all there. Um, I think Iowa has a very outside chance of lane, uh, landing Kyler as Xavier Wanpa is there. But again, I think it is a long shot. Uh, Amari S Snowden who is a dual sport baseball and uh, football guy. I think Iowa has a good chance to land him. Uh, you know, Phil Parker has that Michigan connection. I think Iowa is, is right at the top. Uh, 
Uh, I wouldn't say that they are at the top, but they are top three. Are they number one? I don't know, but they are definitely up there. They're definitely top three. I don't know about number one, but definitely top three. Uh, Trevor Locke, I would say Iowa is top two, uh, probably in second place to Ohio State. Uh, He recently visited Iowa and had a great time. Um, So I listen, I think Iowa is in good position, but, you know, uh, Ohio State is a tough school to say no to. Um, I think Iowa is definitely top three, uh, but I would even go as far to say top two. Jamison Patton, this is an interesting one uh, because on three recruiting's website, the, the prediction machine has Iowa State as substantial favorites to land his services. But I just have a gut feeling that ultimately he's going to choose the Iowa Hawkeyes uh, because Phil Parker is just too damn good of a coach to pass up. Uh, Iowa State has a lot of good stuff going for them. I hate to say it, but it's true. But one of those things is not recruiting the defensive backfield. I think ultimately that's going to be too hard for him to pass up, and I think he will choose the Iowa Hawkeyes. Um Kendrick Raphael is probably the highest, uh, the top running back on Iowa's board. I think they're in good shape for him. Um, I don't know who's first for him. Asa Newsom on three recruiting website has Iowa as the favorites to land his services. Uh, Same with Zach Ortworth, who I think would be a great get. I think Iowa is battling it out with Nebraska for Zach Ortworth's uh, commitment. Uh, Iowa is currently... Uh, in the lead, according to on3.com for Logan Howland, who is the uh, teammate of quarterback commit, uh, Iowa quarterback commit, Marco Lainez. And Iowa just offered a uh, Cooper Abel. Um, I think Iowa is right up there with Iowa State, uh, if not in the lead uh, for his services. Um, either way, Iowa is in great shape for all these guys. The only other guy that I would bring up, the other guys that I would bring up um, would be Joshua Mickens. I think Iowa has a decent shot to land him. Um, I think Iowa did make the top eight for Daniel uh, DeMary, but I would say that they're on the outside looking in for him. Uh, Iowa was in good shape for Kendrick Gilbert, but I think Iowa is on the outside looking in for him. J.J. Cole, Iowa already has their quarterback commit. Uh, They rarely take two quarterback commits. Plus, J.J. Cole has said that he only wants uh, he wants to be the only quarterback commit in uh, the class that he is in. Um, So that takes Iowa off the table. I think Wisconsin is a contender for his commitment, but I think he's likely uh, headed to Iowa State. Uh, And if he is uh, considering Jamison Patton, who is going to Ankeny also, um, I think that that will also be a pull for him to choose Iowa State, but I'm still going with Iowa as the uh, leader for his services. Uh, And the other guys would be Luke Burgess. I think Iowa has a shot of landing him. Uh, I think they have a shot of landing uh, Michael Kilbane. Uh, I think they are in the top three for Tyler Grant right here. Um, Iowa is definitely in the top two for Kai Black. They are battling it out with Iowa State. I think Iowa is in the top five for Jackson Carver, but I don't think they're going to land him. Uh, And I think Iowa is in the top uh, two for Trevor Burr, uh, who Iowa is battling it out with. Yes, of course, Iowa State. Iowa is always battling it out with either Wisconsin, Iowa State, Notre Dame, or like schools like that. Um, It's so annoying. Um, And lastly, you know, I think Iowa has a chance to land wide receiver Frederick Moore, but I think if they land a another wide receiver, it is likely to be wide receiver Chase Hendricks. Uh, Iowa also has a really strong chance to land uh, both uh, as they are brothers, uh, DBs Cameron and Caden Jenkins. Um, either way, as I said, Iowa is doing phenomenally in recruiting. They are in great shape uh, for both this class and next year's class. They are just, they're killing it. 
Uh, I think that this is Iowa's best recruiting coaching staff that they have had in the Kirk Ferentz era. There's a lot of talented recruiters on that Iowa coaching staff. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for listening. This has been an Iowa Hawkeye sports update uh, slash quarterback preview of the 2022 football season. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you guys are staying safe and I will see you guys next time. DBAP, don't be a pussy willow and facts or feelings because your feelings don't matter. Love y'all. See you guys next time. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Bye-bye.